Welcome to Excel Magic Trick number 1,121. Hey, if you want to download this workbook and follow along, click on the link below the video. Hey, we got a great video about finance here. And our real goal is to look at the amazing new RRI function, which calculates the geometric mean or the compounding rate for a particular investment. Now, here's our invested amounts. Here's the end amount. And the period, here we have a begin and an end period. We'll do an example with months also. This function RRI will work for whatever period. But our goal is, hey, check this out. We have begin and end, but I want to know the rate that I earned on this investment. Let's first figure out how many periods there are. So we take the end year minus the begin year, and that tells us how many years we had this investment. Now, here's the formula right here for this compounding rate or geometric mean. Before 2013, when RRI came out, this is how we'd have to do it. We take the end amount and divide it by the begin amount. And I'm putting it in parentheses because I want this caret, this exponent, that's Shift 6 to calculate before any of the other things. I'm, in essence, going to take the end divided by the begin and raise it to the 1 divided by the number of periods. This is taking the nth root, or in our case, the 22nd root of this division. And that will give us 1 plus the rate. So we simply have to subtract 1. Now, that's a lot to remember. And this is a very useful amount. And I'll show you why. It's because that's the average return we had each year based on this beginning amount and this end amount. And we can now use that amount to prove it and get go from any beginning amount to the end amount. Now, if I copy this down, that's the long, brutal way. Watch this RRI. NPER, now NPER, PV, and FV, those are argument screen tip names that we've seen in other functions like future value, present value, PMT, and alt rate, and all sorts of other functions. These actually work slightly different. Now, NPER is the total number of periods, and it could be anything, years, months, days, comma, present value. Now, on most of the other financial functions, like present value, rate, uh, PMT, one of the cash flows has to be negative. But check this out. You just slap the present value, which means the starting amount positive, and the future amount positive. And we don't enter a negative amount like so many other of Excel's financial functions, where you have to have at least one negative. All right, that's it. Is that not a lot easier than that big monster formula over there? That. Is absolutely beautiful. And here's the cool thing. Once you have that rate, now we can use it. Now, in this example, I'll use the long formula for calculating future value. We take, hey, our starting amount times, in parentheses, 1 plus the period rate. That's our average uh, return in parentheses, and then raise it to the total number of periods. This is equivalent to the future value function in Excel, which we'll use in a second. When I copy this down, all the way down, boom, look at that, 12,000 exactly right. So we used our new RRI output to prove that, yes, in fact, that really is the average return. That is an amazing function. One last example, here's some begin and end. And there's our months. I love this new function. It's so easy. RRI, actually just RR, right? Tab. Total number of periods, present value as a positive, future value as a positive, close parentheses, Control Enter, double click and send it down. Now, if you wanted to check, we of course could use the future value function. The future value function is great. We have our arguments, and these are the standard arguments that are in all the financial functions. Rate, that's going to be our period rate. NPER, total number of periods. PMT, we do not have a periodic payment here, but present value, it's from our point of view. So this is negative. It's going into the bank. So I'm entering it as a negative. Close parentheses, Control Enter, double click and send it down, and I get exactly the right amount. By the way, if you didn't enter this as a negative, that means that's our point of view. It's our money, yes. But we it went out of our wallet and into the bank. So it's out of our wallet or purse. 
that's the negative. If you put it as a positive, no problem. But that means you're on the investment side or the bank side receiving it, because that means this came into your pocket positive. And of course, this comes out negative, because at the end of the investment, that's how much you have to pay out as the bank to the person. I'm going to Control-Z, because our point of view really was that cash flow is negative. Oh, this RRI, absolutely beautiful. We did a month example, and we did a year example. All right, we'll see you next trip.